conditions, but we know a God that is a prayer-answering God. Amen. We need to pray for Brother Toby White, pastor's brother. He was en route from Florida, and then uh, some serious concerns came up, and so he went to the, the Temple VA Hospital, and he's there for some tests, but I'm believing in God's report. Amen. And that is where pastor is this evening, is in support of his brother through those tests and to be there for him when uh, he gets in. We're just believing that God will have his hand in that particular situation. Amen. We have many, many that are just fighting illness. We need to pray for Sister Crystal Hoosier, who is, you know, born again of water and spirit in this church, is part of this church family and, you know, living in Florida now. But we need to be praying for her and her family. Amen. We need to be praying for Sister Philip, Sister Amber, uh, many others in the church that are fighting sickness. Amen. But God is still on the throne. And whatever the news says and how they're focusing on certain strains of viruses and trying to put fear back into the people, we know a God that can do all things. We've got to worship him and love him and continue to live for him despite potential fear. Through the fear, because God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. And so tonight, can we stand to our feet this evening, and can we go to the Lord in prayer? Amen. Many of you have been endued with power since the Holy Ghost came, and I believe that when we speak in faith, mountains move. When we speak in faith, things transpire. And there's individuals here tonight in our church that need your prayer, that need your intercession, pastor's brother, all those that I listed, we need to pray together as a collective. Can we close our eyes and lift our hands this evening and just begin to lift your voice as a collective. Begin to lift your voice as the body of Christ. Lord God of Jacob, you are a healer. God, you are the one that can do all things exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. God, you are my Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord that heals, God. You are that great and wise physician, and God, it's by your stripes that we are healed. God, we lift up Brother Toby White right now, God. We know that the enemy, God, is scared, God, of the ministering that he was going to bring to this church. God, that he's attacking, God, Brother White's health. But God, we pray right now as a church, and we pray right now as a collective, begin to move in that VA hospital, God. Begin to move Move into that hospital room. Begin to move on his cardiovascular system. And God, we are believing in a good report. God, we're praying for an expedient recovery of all our brothers and sisters, God, that are fighting sickness. God, we pray, oh God, that it is just and no, God, that it is another memorial in the making, another testimony in the making. And God, we give you glory here tonight. God, we rejoice here tonight. God, we praise you anyhow here tonight in Jesus' Jesus name. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Somebody lift your voice to Jesus. Amen. You are here because God desired you to be here. Amen. And let's just see what he does this evening. Let us worship him. These altars are open. Whatever you have need of, we will pray. Let us worship our king.
clap of praise here tonight. Amen. Remember, these altars are open. Whatever you have need of, we will pray. Let us keep our minds on the Lord tonight and see what he does. Don't let anyone or anything distract you with what God has for us tonight. Amen. Let's continue to worship.
lift our hands. And can we just begin to magnify the name of Jesus in this house. When we begin to call in his name, there is liberty. When we begin to call in his name, things begin to happen. Chains begin to break. Strongholds begin to crumble. Lord God, it is better to be one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. God, I just want to spend a moment with you because that moment, God, is greater than ours with anyone else. God, we are to be your first love. God, we are to place you first, God. You said seek you first in all your righteousness, and then all these things shall be added. God, keep you as your first love. God, change our minds, change our hearts, God. God, rearrange our perception and our perspective, oh God, to keep you first above all, not to be distracted by things of this world or individual by this, of this world. Oh, but God, you, Jesus, because we'll be blessed, be strengthened, we'll be ministered to, keeping you first, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Oh, God, move into this place. We're going to continue to sing unto the Lord.
the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight. Amen. I'm glad that victory has a name. Healing has a name. Counseling has a name. Ministering has a name. Deliverance has a name. And you can just go on and on and on with God's attributes. Amen. If you feel comfortable in doing so this evening, you may return to your seats. We're going to make a few announcements. Amen. I had a, a great time with the youth last or yesterday. We went to Fort Hood. For many of them, it was the first time that they were ever on a military installation. First time that they were on Fort Hood. And they've lived and cleaned their entire life. We went to the Sportsman Center and had some of the greatest breakfasts known to man. When you agree, youth, when you agree, uh, you would agree because there was a lot of empty plates that was gone in 2.5 seconds. Amen. I've never seen so much fre French toast in my entire life. Amen. And then we, we went to the first cab museum and, and looked at all the military memorabilia and the artifacts that they have. And then we ended up at the PX. And I've never seen youth get so excited. I mean, they were excited with the food. They were excited with the tanks and the helicopters and the airplane. I had many of them asking, Brother John, can we shoot this tank? I said, no, that's a federal offense. I'm just joking. But I've never seen the youth get so excited when we were at the PX. And the PX is a mini mall, much better than I had it when I was a soldier. I, I did not have a Brother Delion, Elder Phillips. Did you have a Starbucks in your PX? No, these troops today, they have a Starbucks and a Chipotle. And I had the dining facility. I was excited when I had Burger King. I remember one time our first sergeant was running the whole company. He said, y'all hungry? I'm buying breakfast. And then we would be running our five-mile run, and we run into the uh, Burger King parking lot, and then we would just run laps to the drive through And then the employees in the Burger King would wave at us every time we go by, and he goes, everybody breathe in. Oh, I'm full. Let's go back to the company now. I was like, that was my excitement. But, man, it's, it's pretty much like the, the outlet malls down at Round Rock now on Fort Hood. But the youth saw a pair of Air Jordans in a box. It's kind of like that crane game. Man, I've never seen so many youth get excited. I'm like, y'all just saw tanks. They're like, Air Jordans. But they had a good time, and it was, it was good fellowship, and, and I, I think that they, they had a good experience with that. Amen. Now, uh, just a few announcements uh, going on from here. As Pastor said, we're, we're not going to be having a watch night service. He felt led not to have one. I mean, the history of it anyway in general, really, the Jewish calendar is the true calendar. Right? It's a lunar calendar that goes back almost 8,000 years. And the calendar that we have is secular. It, it goes back to the Julian calendar from Julius Caesar. And then later on with the Gregorian calendar with Pope Gregory, just trying to take over everything. And so the new year we have is a secular tradition. And as Pastor said, it's, it's for safety. And everybody knows what happens during, during New Year's anyway. And every day is a new day with God. Amen. Amen. But we are going to be having a fellowship this Friday at the Brown and White Farm. And if Pastor was here, it would be the White and Brown Farm. I have chickens, so it's a farm now. Amen. And it's going to be out at our property in the big city of Holland, population 1,121. No stoplight. It's good. I like it. But we, we live out in Holland now. And we're excited to have you, and you are more than welcome to come. It's, that is going to be Friday from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. If you need directions, either text Pastor or myself, and we're looking forward to having you up there. We have just shy of five acres and some chickens to go hang out with. But there's many things to do, and it's just fellowship. Amen. Just looking forward to seeing what God is going to do in the fellowship. Amen. People being chased by chickens. It's exciting. Being facetious. Amen. Is there any other announcements this evening? Any other announcements this evening? Amen. If there are no more announcements, we're going to receive our Wednesday night tithe and half shekel offering. We're going to sing another song unto the Lord. Let's greet one another. Amen.
Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Our ensemble may be seated. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you tonight. Remember to continue to pray for Brother Toby Wyatt as he was at the VA hospital believing for a good report. That is where Pastor is this evening. He's in support of his brother, getting ready to make all the accommodations for him to come to uh, the property in Holland. But we are believing that God is going to move in that particular situation. We have a slew of individuals that need prayer. Amen. So we need to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters. Amen. We are going to be reading in the book of Haggai. Haggai. We just touched up on Haggai with Pastor on his last sermon. It's going to be the second chapter. We are going to be going through several verses, but the second chapter starting at verse 2. We're going to be going on to verse 9, and then we're going to eventually get over to verses 21 through 23. The book of Haggai. Amen. Verse 2. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Chosedek, or Hosedek, the high priest, and the residue or remnant of the people saying, amen. If you feel comfortable in doing so tonight, can we close our eyes and lift our hands? Can we just begin to get our minds on the Lord and see what he does here tonight? Oh God of Jacob, remind us you are the God that makes all things new. You are the God of restoration. You are the God that repairs the breaches in the wall. You are the one that restores, oh God, with the canker worm and the palm worm. And the enemy has devoured, oh Lord. You are the God that Old things have passed away, hence you make all things new. And God, I pray tonight, God, that you speak to the youngest, to the oldest. God, open hearts and minds. God, I rebuke every spirit of distraction in this place, trying to hinder the word of God entering into the hearts of your people. Lord Jesus, allow them, O oh God, to be silenced, those particular spirits. And God, let all things be done in decency and order. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight? Amen. I like to preach this particular thought, preparing for the return, preparing for the return. The book of Haggai is a minor prophet. All right, pop quiz. Why is he a minor prophet? Why is he considered a minor prophet? This is almost like a, a, a Bible study type of service, right? Why is it considered a minor prophet? I need a risk taker. I need somebody to be brave. Somebody that may have taught at Sunday school or Bible. Yes, Sister White. It's a small book, right? That is the difference between your major prophets and your minor prophets. It's not, it's not that Isaiah and Jeremiah are better than Haggai. It's just that they have more writing. That is the difference between your major prophets and your minor prophets. Poor Haggai, it's only two chapters that are documented. Jeremiah has a lot to say. Isaiah had a lot to say. Ezekiel had a lot to say. Haggai has a lot of power in the punch of two chapters. Haggai takes place about at the end of the 70 years of exile. We know that the Judah, the, the country of Judah, was taken over and put into exile and became the diaspora. A diaspora is a group of people that have no home. In the year 586, the Babylonians destroyed the temple, destroyed Jerusalem, and those that the Babylonians saw fit that were worthy were sent to Iraq, sent to Babylon to be used, to be enslaved. So for 70 years, they became a shell of their former selves. In that 70 years, the Babylonians fell, Babylon fell, and the Persians rose up. We had kings like Cyrus and kings like Darius that God used to prepare the way to have the return back to Israel. We know that even Queen Hadassah, Queen Esther, right? I just had to use my daughter's name, married a Persian. And that was King Xerxes, like the same Xerxes that went against the Greeks, that went against the 300 Spartans. It is believed that that is the king. Amen. But Haggai and Zechariah had the responsibility from God to motivate the people to go back and restore the land, to go back and restore their identity, to go back and remember who they were. Now, we know that Ezra restored the law. 
We know that Nehemiah in one hand had a sword, in another hand had a tool, and repaired the walls of Jerusalem. But Haggai and Zechariah, around the year 516 to 520 B.C., 70 years after Jerusalem was destroyed, it was to motivate through God the people that God is ready to restore. That God is ready to mend. That your forefathers, they have gone through their judgment. Your forefathers have gone through the punishment. But you are still God's precious possession. And sometimes in our life, we keep ourselves in exile when we were not meant to stay in exile. Sometimes we keep ourselves as the diaspora, a people without a home, wandering in the Babylonian lands. When God used the Haggai and the Zechariah to say, go, God is ready to restore something better than what was before. Old things have passed away. God has made all things new. He's going to restore what the cankerworm has said, but if we are not careful, and it's how we are with ourselves, it's self-judgment or self-guilt or condemnation, we stay in a We stay in an exile and we keep our harps on the willows of the rivers of Babylon when God said, if you would get up and go, he's going to restore better than what you had before. And here tonight, that is what I am here to tell you, that God is preparing you for the return to something that is better than the former, to return you to an identity. So the children of Israel were a shadow of their former selves. Now, they had the the form of Judaism, a form of worship, a, a form of the law, but they weren't to the brightness of who they were. They weren't to the cusp of who they were. They weren't on the top of who they were. They were the shell of themselves. But God is saying, I am ready to rearrange. If you would, by faith, get up and go to the place that I've created for you. Amen. Evangelist Simmons, if you mind reading, we are going to go to verse 3 of the second chapter of Haggai. Who is left among you? Who is left among you? I don't have any volume. That saw this house in her first glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Haggai's asking, is there anybody alive in the seven years that, have, that knows of the original? temple. Maybe the the newborns that were snatched from Jerusalem, maybe the one or two-year-olds that were snatched from Jerusalem and sent to Babylon, but he's saying that generation has really passed away. At this point, there was people that have gone back to Jerusalem, but they had not built the temple yet. And Haggai says, have the faith to build it back. Maybe there was something in themselves that say, I'm, I'm scared to build something back that God gave me because I don't want it to get torn down again. And God says, if you have the faith, I'll put the hedge of protection around my promise. If we're not careful, God is saying, here is your brick, here is your mortar, here's a sword like Nehemiah, here's, here's a law like Ezra. If you would go back and have the faith to allow me to build it back. But these Jews, these Israelites that were living under Persian rule, didn't want to build the temple. And Haggai said, you that are still here in Persia, go. Those that are in Israel, build. And God here tonight is speaking to the hearts of individuals, knocking on the hearts of individuals. Will you have the faith to build? Will you have the faith to leave your exile? Do you have the faith to take the title of diaspora off your name. God is quick and just to forgive. He is the one that makes all things new. You are a new creature. Old things have passed away. Amen. Let's continue, please. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek. So Zerubbabel was... Uh, he was the governor of Judah at the time. He was sent by Persia to kind of be the governor and the overseer to be a type of government, right? And then Joshua, he was put in the position of the high priest, but it was at the point of reestablishing where things should have been with the temple, with the Levitical priesthood. Be strong. 
And be strong, all ye people of the land, and saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. I believe the children of Israel on multiple occasions had to be reminded to be strong and of good courage and to fear not. Moses said it, Joshua said it, a multitude of prophets said it, but God here tonight wants you to get out of your exile and your diaspora, and he says, fear not, be strong, I am with you. That should be it. But if we're not careful, but God, I deserve the exile. God, I, I deserve to be the diaspora apostolic, wandering within my own land. God, I deserve to be a shell of myself. Satan loves those words. That is his pledge of allegiance. You deserve. You brought this on. God didn't do that. And here tonight, God is speaking to you. Be strong and of good courage. And fear not. And go forth. Wow. A governor that never had a prophet speak to that level. A high priest that never had a prophet. That should be encouraging. You are worthy to get out of exile. You are worthy to get out of diaspora. You are worthy to be restored. You are worthy to be made new. Amen. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. And always going back to Egypt, talking about his forefathers with the Exodus. I am with you. My favorite part, this is epic. But thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and Amen. the earth and Amen. the sea and the dry land. Amen. And who is he shaking it for? Not out of his enjoyment. Look at me shake all the earth. Look, me, look at me shake the seas. He's shaking it for you. Amen. God shakes things up in our lives just to bring you to the pinnacle of what he desires. Amen. Just to bring you to his heart. He shakes things up in our lives to show you his wonders and to bring you to him. He shakes the nations for you. He shakes your entire circumstance because he is jealous of you. Amen. If we're not careful, our energy's in our pain, and he becomes jealous of that energy. He wants that love, that energy, that heart, Amen. because it's being consumed by guilt or condemnation. He is jealous for that. Amen. That heart is mine. That child is mine. That daughter is mine. And he's willing to shake nations for you. Let us continue. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver, is, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Going back to the Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, that was mentioned before. But I like this. I'm going to fill this house. The house hadn't been built yet. As Pastor said, the, the remnants of a foundation, it was, it was in ruins. But God is going to fill what you allow him to build. Yeah. God is going to be what you will put your hands to that he allows you to put your hands to. If he's in it. I'm going to fill that temple even though you don't see it yet. I'm going to fill that blessing even though you don't see it yet. I'm going to fill that promise, even though you don't see it yet. I'm going to be with you in the midst of it, even though you don't see the outcome yet. Amen. Be strong and of good courage. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, Pastor saith the Lord talked about this last time. The latter house was Solomon's house, that first temple, destroyed by the Babylonians in 586. But what God is going to build and he talked about this before. Haggai had messianic prophecy to it, meaning that it was a foreshadow to Jesus Christ. It was a typology to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, preparing the way. But the former will be greater than the latter. Your testimonies and your memorials, they were great at the time, but if we trust God, you're going to see greater things. God is doing a new thing. I've seen stickers on cars that say that. Do they really understand that? No. God is doing a new thing if we allow him to do it. 
The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, oh, saith many, the Lord of hosts. How many of us are longing for peace? We live in chaos. This world, the news feeds off chaos. Our news feed, our social media, everything that is spit out in this digital age feeds off chaos. It goes and feeds off our anxieties, our fears, and our uncertainties, and our doubts. And then those fears and uncertainty and doubts seep into our soul. And Satan begins to move in that chaos. But God desires, out of anything else, to give peace. And here tonight, some of us feel that they deserve the chaos. Some of us here tonight feel that they deserve all the crumblings of the former temple. When God is saying, if you would just go and build. You know what another miracle with Haggai and Zechariah and Ezra and Nehemiah, that God used a Persian king. Do you all understand that that was a miracle in and of itself? Because Persian kings were considered gods. A Persian king was considered a deity. And God used a false god to bless his people. God uses what is intended for evil and makes it good. Amen. Chapter 2, verses 21 through 23. Sometimes we just need a Haggai to remind us to go and claim our restoration. Here we go. Sometimes it takes twice, right? Not the two or three witnesses, let all things be established. Amen. Sometimes you've got to repeat yourself. Amen. So Haggai has to repeat himself. Go ahead. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Amen. For his people. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. Man, look what God does to our enemy. If one would have the faith to come to restoration. That puts a thousand to flight. If two has the faith to allow God to build you back up to greater than the, the former, right? To greater to what God has in store for you, two of those individuals could put 10,000 to flight. Can you imagine what could happen to our community if we would get ourselves out of exile? Because they had a form of the law. They had a form of their identity. But can you imagine what would happen in this church if we would stop feeling that we deserve to be in the place that we're at? If we just feel this is where I'm at, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here in Persia. You're not Persian. I'm going to stay right here in Babylon. You're not Babylonian. You're God's people. Amen. Let's continue. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, Will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet? For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. God has chosen you. I mean, if I had a group of chariots coming my way, I want God to take them all out. That would be glorious. Amen. I mean, we've seen it in the Red Sea, correct? We've seen God show his hands in protecting his sons and his daughters. But I like this particular portion of the verse where it says, I will make thee as a signet. You notice how it says that God will show all these wonders and then he's going to make Zerubbabel and Haggai, right, a signet. What is a signet? It is, it is a type of memorial. It is a type of identifier. It is like a badge. It is like a ribbon. It is like a medal in the army. It is to be, remind and to show everybody the exploits that you did in the service, right? It's like an insignia, right? It is to show God's hand. What God does in your hand, you will be a signet. And God has chosen your testimony to be that memorial, to show everybody God's wonders. And he doesn't just throw it out to anybody. He throws it out to individuals that are precious to him, that desire him. God, make me a signet because you have brought me out of exile. God, you have brought me out of the diaspora. God, show me who you are. God, make me a signet. God, I believe it says in Matthew, shine your light among all men. 
and they may see your good works that they could glorify the Father in heaven, I believe is what it says. Amen. God, show me here tonight. If we feel comfortable in doing so, can we stand to our feet here this evening? I pray that God's word and the words that went forth ministered to somebody here this evening. You don't deserve to stay where you're at if God's already forgiven you. You're not worthless. You're not a failure. The devil is a liar and the father of all lies. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by the hand of our creator. And here tonight, God is speaking to somebody that feels that they deserve to be under the rule of the Persians. When God here tonight, it may be a Haggai somewhere in your life that comes along and says, go and be restored. Go and see what God does. You are worthy remnants and residue to go receive the restoration of God. Can we close our eyes and lift our hands tonight? Keep our minds on the Lord. Don't let anything distract you. Begin to lift your voice here tonight. God, restore us. God, I pray for the one or two or three individuals, specifically God. Speak to their heart tonight, God. I pray, oh God, that you send and transmit encouragements, ministry, restoration, God, that they are worthy to come back, God, to the land of Judah and to have their temple restored and to have your glory dwell once again in it. God, that the latter will be greater than the former. And God, they are here in this building because they are worthy to lift their hands. They're worthy to come to this altar. They're worthy, oh God, to be called son and daughter. Lord Jesus, begin to move into this place tonight, God. Let it be the spirit, God, of repair. God, let it be the spirit of mending. Let it be the spirit of a, the physician of the heart. Repair their heart, God. Restore their heart, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Amen. Once again, it, it was such an honor to see, see everyone here this evening. I pray for your safe travels back to your homes. Remember fellowship at the Brown and White Farm or the White, the white and Brown Farm. Amen. It's synonymous. Amen. Remember fellowship at our property from 430, right, to 730. See, we have people coming. Amen. If you need, if you need directions, if you need directions, please text myself or pastor. Sister White. Amen. We do need a volleyball. We do have a volleyball net, but no ball. The, the previous owners took the ball. And so, but we have a beautiful volleyball net, and, the pre, and this is how God blesses us. The previous owner said, uh, are you going to use the volleyball net? I mean, we could take it if you want to. I said, well, it's going to be for a church fellowship in the future, not knowing that this would come up. He said, well, fine, I'll build a new one. Let your church be blessed. Amen. So I need a volleyball. Amen. We have a basketball hoop. Bring some basketballs. Bring lawn chairs. We're going to have... Um, a bonfire going on, so we're going to have some s'mores. Everybody be safe. Fire extinguisher. Amen. Pastor will have the fire department on standby. Amen. Just knowing our pastor. Amen. Looking forward to having you. Please come if you can. Amen. Please remember to pray for all those that are fighting sickness. Amen. It's good to see my church family here tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you.